Hello and welcome to another episode of the Low Code Cafe, uh, episode 22. Uh, my name is Bogdan Litsesko. I'm founder and CEO of uh, Plant and App. And uh, if you are uh, new to this webinar, know that it happens every week and it's a hands-on uh, technical webinar. So we get to see new systems being built with low code. We get to see uh, lessons that we learn from support and we get to see uh, product updates, new features and how, uh, how to use them. Uh, today also marks that we start a new series in this uh, Low Code Cafe uh, webinar. And this new series, it's even more technical than usual, but it's also very powerful because you will see ways in which uh, you could extend the platform if uh, you have a development team with new actions, new templates, and uh, so on. <clears throat> All these um, webinars are recorded and they are published on our YouTube channel. So we'll post the link in a chat window in a bit. So make sure to go and review what you find interesting. And uh, we have a few different uh, parts in this webinar. So first I will give you some updates about what we are doing as a community. But after that, we'll get into the, some product updates with uh, Reza and then have some uh, uh, the lessons that we learned from support with Dale Warner, our head of support. And finally, we'll get to the hands-on part where we'll, uh, today we'll get to, to implement uh, a HubSpot action. If you were in the past editions, you know that we integrated a marketing portal with HubSpot to create contacts. But today we are going to rewrite that logic. So instead of doing like server requests directly calling the APIs, we use a much simpler action that uh, our CTO, uh, Robert Dima, will implement for us. Cool. So just to give you uh, a few uh, highlights of what's been happening in the community. So many of you know that we uh, launched an equity crowdfunding campaign where we invited everyone in our community to uh, invest and own a share in our company and uh, participate to our growth together. So we released this uh, at the beginning of uh, October and it's been going well. We already uh, went past $100,000. We are actually $113,000 right now. Our goal is to get close to half a million and there's still 88 days to go. So uh, we still push actively on this. So if you haven't invested yet, I invite you to check it out. It is the future uh, for our company, for our community. Um, and in uh, starting like uh, three editions ago, I started doing this thing in the, in the webinar, like featuring a use case every week of what our customers build with uh, Plant and App. So this week I want to uh, speak to you about uh, association management. We actually have uh, quite a few different customers that are doing it, but uh, today I will speak to you about uh, CEO clubs. That is a business association. So basically uh, they have members that pay a membership in order to access uh, the network and also access the uh, events that they are doing on a regular basis. So then um, before uh, doing it with Planted Up, they had everything on spreadsheets and uh, even physically like on post-it notes uh, that were put on the wall. So it was very manual and not, uh, it did not scale well for them. So then uh, after adopting Planted Up and implementing this system, which uh, took around 40 days of development, they were able to automate all of that. So then uh, membership is automated. Uh, generating invoices, different plans, so different business rules for different members uh, access. Uh, but then also they built a lot, uh, a lot behind it. They build the event, man the event management part and the event management, management part, they build it like with uh, ERP features inside of it. So they can calculate budgets uh, and sponsors and uh, attendance and everything that goes in, uh, into organizing an event. And after that, they extended it with marketing features. So now they can uh, send um, uh, email marketing, they can send push notification to the mobile application, they can send SMS messages, and they can even send uh, surveys, uh, create dynamic surveys, like we did in one of the uh, webinars on the marketing portal. Uh, so they collect uh, some data from their uh, members. So very powerful system. And uh, this is a business, <coughs> sorry, this is a business association but we have customers also in, uh, uh, in uh, education, in sports associations, uh, in uh, sci scientific uh, associations and so on. So um, 
I will, uh, I will invite you if you are interested in this use case for yourself or for your customers to reach out and we can uh, arrange a demo to see, to see all the features and also see how it was built behind the scenes and also how this uh, low code approach make it so easy to keep extending, keep tweaking it as the uh, processes changes, as the business adapts to this new world that we all live in. Uh, so this is the featured uh, use case of the week. Uh, and uh, I will follow with an important announcements, announcement. Uh, we just released uh, version 1.10 uh, <clears throat> of Plant and App. You probably uh, all got a uh, email notification about this. One of the big things that we added uh, in 1.10 <clears throat> is the ability to download a uh, Plant and App trial and install it on your existing DNN instances. So especially for users that come from our DNN community, this is very powerful because you can try it out on uh, systems that you already have in place, right? It doesn't break anything uh, when you install it, and then you can adopt new features incrementally. So I invite you to try it out. Uh, the link can be found on DNN Sharp website all over the place. Like for example, this is on the uh, app builder page. So you can click start trial, but then the, all the links go to uh, this page on plant and app where you can start downloading trial and uh, it installs as any other module, so that's easy. And I guess uh, I will pass it on to Reza because Reza will also show, show a bit uh, the new activation and other screens that are involved into uh, managing uh, the trial, but also managing the paid licenses. So Reza is our head of product and uh, I invite him to give us uh, the highlights for, for uh, this week. Thanks, Bogdan. Let me just, uh, can you uh, enable sharing for me, please? Yeah. Okay. So, hello, everyone. Welcome back from holidays. Hope it was good. Uh, as Bogdan mentioned, 110 has shipped. A um, lot of goodies in this one. Uh, the license activation. We have a new. Um, page builder skin. It's part skin. It's based on Zillion, so it plays nice with everything. Uh, however, you have the ability to override and customize it color-wise, look and feel a little bit, um, as well as having some enhancements to the configuration, what we're basically calling the page builder um, functionality, which then lets you access not only editing the, the configuration and settings of the various features that are on the page, like forms and grids and things like that, but also being able to very easily um, create entities right from the page you're on, slide in the app builder so you can look up a workflow, how it works, a token perhaps that you're wanting to use, and then just slide it back out of your way uh, and keep working right where you are. So no need to go to two different pages and, and toggle back and forth between them. Uh, I've been, it's in a beta right now. There's a, a few minor enhancements we're going to make, but it is available in the add-on section. And uh, if you're a little bit brave and want to try it out and, and get a feel for it, uh, I say go for it. Uh, I've been using it myself a lot, and I'm really, really pleased with the results. And uh, we should have an update in the next um, you know, few days, early next week, that uh, tunes a few of the little uh, rough edges that were there. And then I feel like it's really ready for production use. Um, talked about the in past episodes, the ability now to reorder your properties uh, just through drag and drop, and they will propagate out to your different uh, UI that's generated for your app, your pages, your uh, forms, your listings, that sort of stuff. We've got the new decimal property uh, throughout the system. So you can specify integer and decimal separately when you are uh, using a number. Um, the KPI dashboard has had a lot of new uh, 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 capabilities come into it, the ability to filter, uh, the ability to um, target other tables and views, even from different servers, SQL Server databases. Uh, it is SQL Server based right now. Uh, more data going into GitHub. You know, we're kind of in this mode right now, making sure everything that makes up your app gets into GitHub. You at least um, can go and look and see what changed. If you 
uh, are having trouble with a setting or something, maybe not able to get back in there. Uh, a lot of them can be copied as JSON and pasted and imported back in. So it's very handy, not just for audit and things, but being able to a little bit manually, but recreate uh, what you had in the past if, if you're having trouble with what you have now. All of this though, from a runway standpoint is us moving into position of once we've got everything into GitHub, now start making it so you can pull uh, things back in and either restore what you had or push things out to different instances so you can stage things, go from test to production environments, this sort of stuff. So we're well on our way for that. There's a few, few items left that we need to get exported out first. Uh, but headway has been made there. We did test with uh, 9.8, so far no issues. Um, and so that's available now, has been for a week. I've had some people adopt it a little bit early and, and um, things are pretty good. The one caveat uh, I would, I would kind of uh, mention that you'll want to be uh, mindful as if you were had tiles, KPI tiles and the dashboard from uh, some of the very early instances of it when it was kind of a beta feature, uh, you may notice after the upgrade, your configurations, your tiles are unconfigured. Uh, just reach out. There's very few people that this will probably impact. Of course, I've ran into them all in the last week, most of them. And we have a SQL script. You just run it through the console and it will fix all of that and everything we write back uh, right as rain. So nothing to worry about there. If you see that your um, tiles aren't looking right, we can fix that up real quick. Uh, and then kind of looking out at rest of this year and, and beyond. So release 111 will be our, that's what we're developing and working on now. It'll be our last release of the year. Um, uh, expecting it to come um, probably the week before Christmas as a release candidate. And then uh, kind of right in between the holidays uh, will be around. Um, and, and so hopefully we'll be getting the stable out then. I really would like to drop one last release. Uh, it'll be a good one as well. Um, you'll be able to have uh, when in your uh, entity builder, uh, you'll be able to specify if you want a dashboard added to that entity or that page automatically, it'll put it there for you. You can turn it off or on. Um, we have, you know, the admin uh, error logs mostly that are now inside of app builder. Also, a lot of things are logged to file and disk debug information, uh, a lot of useful stuff there. And so wanting to start getting those disk logs pulled right into the app builder as well. So there's no need to connect remotely um, to a file system or anything like that and, and hunt and peck for these files. So we'll start rolling those in. Uh, we have the new listing module, particularly that calendar feature I've demoed in the past. Uh, it, it will definitely be ready in this release. It, it just missed 1.10. Uh, and then in 1.12, we'll have a new grid layout. Um, something else I think very useful, uh, if you start using, once you start using workflows, you'll never go back. Um, and I've been using workflows for everything, small ones, big ones. And I've noticed a lot of them are very similar or have patterns that I want to put into place and recreating them manually is kind of painful. So going to have, uh, in, in this release, uh, the ability to clone workflows and just rename them, copy them, and then you can go tweak things, but that sets the stage. Not sure if it'll make this release or not, but otherwise 112, the ability to export out and import entire workflows between environments, between instances. So we can start sharing. I've got some really cool workflows I'm doing that do logging of different data and, and things like that. And so if you had that entity in this workflow, you could just start using it in your application. So we can start sharing workflows and things amongst ourselves and between our apps. Um, finally, want to close out those last GitHub integrations. We're doing some DNN 9.8 testing, specifically with Telerik removed completely out of DNN, and just making sure nothing on our end is going to have any issues. I don't anticipate any, but we're making sure of that. And then really the thing I'm, I'm trying to do here as we close out the year and, and kind of move into 2021 is just you know, get get the rough edges smoothed out, um, you know, stability things, some minor security things, any kind of little bug fixes and things we're getting from people uh, and just really polish up the app. So should have some cool new features and, and some good stability. And if you look at where we've come this year, I mean, uh, the beginning of the year to now, it's, it's just a totally different system and application. And um, I've been using it myself a lot to do some integrations and implementations and just can't believe how different it is from the old days. It's very, very fast. Uh, experience. So just kind of keep going. Appreciate everyone, uh, you know, being pioneers in this space with us and, and um, giving all the feedback. It's all that stuff's coming in and, and making it into every one of these releases. So really appreciate the, the input and feedback on the community 
forum portal. I'm aware of so much that goes on out there and all that stuff's coming into the backlog. So I um, just want to thank everyone for that. Keep it coming, keep being patient and uh, we'll just keep making things better. Uh, so then I do want to show the licensing really quick. Um, I need to just delete a license if I can out here. Um, I tell you what, Bogdan, maybe can we come back to me? I need to remove this license file real quick because I, I just licensed it before this to test it and uh, I just need to clear it off and maybe after Dale or something, I can swing back in for, for 30 seconds and just show it. No worries. Yes, we can leave it for, for the end of the webinar then. And okay. we can move on with the uh, coding stuff. Okay, good deal. Cool. So Dale, if you want to take it over. Absolutely. Hello, hello, and back from holiday. Hope everyone had a good one. Um, just uh, following on a little bit with what Reza said, uh, even yesterday, I was looking at out on the community forum, and there were people who were there was there was uh, one client who was asking about being able to share workflows and if we will uh, add that ability within the um, within the forum. And I'm I'm uh, hoping that we do. I think that being able to reuse that work and share it uh, share useful things between um, not not only within your organization but externally, if it's useful, let's let's uh, let's share it and and leverage. Uh, the work that we're all putting in. Um, today, my, my segment, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, config file hacks and mockups, particularly around actions. Now, this is starting down our deep dive of uh, um, doing the development um, effort, uh, adding the HubSpot create a contact uh, functionality. But uh, first, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the way that uh, our product deals with the configuration of actions. Um, so a couple of background items. The, um, uh, there's, a, there's a folder with, that is automatically created within your uh, .NET Nuke implementation when you install our, our, our products. Uh, and this is the path to it and desktop modules uh, Dan and Sharp common config actions. There are other uh, there are other folders that'll be of interest, but I'm going to focus on this one today. So all the common actions that are actions that are common between our products uh, are configured here, and so we're going to look at what we can do in that area. Um, within that, there's a there, you're, you're going to see some files, and I'm going to open up our, our uh, one of our demo systems and, and take a look at these in just a minute, but. You can, it's, it's possible to remove or change the configurations that you find there. And those things, if, for example, if you wanted to disable or remove one particular uh, action type from your system, you could just remove the file and it would uh, stop the ability for that action to work. Uh, in the same way, if you wanted to make a, a change to it for some reason, you could configure a custom change to it. Just realize that those, because those files get replaced when an upgrade happens, uh, that an upgrade will bring them back to their original state, either restore them back in or change them back to the way they were. But there's also a, a technique in there where you can uh, either, you can add a new configuration or you can override an existing configuration uh, by adding another file with the same ID and uh, just, just later in the load process, it's done alphabetically, so you can do it later in the load process, and that is upgrade safe. So um, today I'm gonna kind of, it's gonna be a qu quick demonstration, but I'm gonna do two things. One is to show how to create a new action. Uh, so this kind of upgrade safe, uh, my, I'm gonna create a private um, uh, action that, is, that will be actions, but will allow additional documentation. I'm kind of a, a big fan of documenting internally what's going on in uh, my, my uh, actions, my steps. And so uh, adding, having a little bit more room to describe it and, and, and all is, is what we're going to accomplish there. So uh, that's one thing that I'm going to do. And then that we'll move on into um, how to, how a, a power user like me could develop a uh, and the interface for a HubSpot integration. 
right? I'm not going to be the developer that actually does the work, but I'm going to develop, okay, this is what I want it to look like in uh, when I go in to configure my actions, I can get that all set up and then hand that off to a developer to, uh, to implement properly. So uh, we'll be doing that, uh, that work to, or at least to show you how, how that might happen. So uh, let me start by showing you, I have a, a plant and apple implementation going here, and I'm going to uh, create a new workflow. So a new workflow, and I'm going to add an action. And when I take a look at the actions, uh, really what I'm going to show is the absence of actions. I don't, the, the, the action that I'm going to create this custom, um, let's, let's do actions and document them, uh, is going to be called custom. And I don't have a custom section in here yet. And then we're also going to be adding the HubSpot section and we don't have that in here yet. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just demonstrating that, there's, that it's not here yet, but uh, it will be in a minute. So um, let's jump over into my, into my uh, development system. And I'm going to, um, the editor that I'm going to work with today, I'm sorry, uh, I'm just going to show you real quick. This is that folder that I was talking about. I've opened that same folder on my system so that we can see the files that are there. And so you'll see uh, files like, for example, ones that we provide, plant an app, uh, how to delete an entity, how to, uh, all, all these, these are the interfaces for our, our different actions. So we're going to, uh, the one that we're going to focus on is the execute actions. We're going to make our own private copy of that one. So uh, I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio here and open this same path and <clears throat> take a look at um, this flow that I just identified find it in my list. So flow, ex execute actions, JSON, I'm going to open that up. And uh, if, you, uh, if you remember, I mean, this is, this is the complete definition of that execute actions. It has an ID, it has um, a, a title, and then it has in the parameter section, a list of, uh, uh, it collects an action list. Um, it, it occurs to me it would probably be useful to see this in, in as it exists. So if we were to look under flow and execute actions, um, we see it, it has title, description, error message, condition. Those are kind of built-ins and we don't have to worry about creating them. And then has the ability to add a list of actions. So this actions parameter here corresponds to this actions list here, this, this set of parameters. So I want to make my own private copy of this thing uh, so that I can um, uh, add some add my documentation. So I'm just going to copy and paste, and it creates a copy of it here within my system. And I'm going to call this custom dot uh, execute actions because it's a different name than anything that uh, um, that Plant and App releases. That's going to be um, upgrade safe, it will continue to exist after we upgrade. So I'm gonna now find it in my list, custom execute actions and open it up. So this thing as it exists is, is just a complete duplicate of execute actions, but we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna give it a, a different ID so that it's actually a different item. So I'm gonna call it custom execute actions and the title of it is gonna be execute actions uh, includes documentation. And um, it's still going to execute a list of actions. This area here is the code, a reference to the code that's going to do the work uh, when it's implemented. And I'm not going to change that. I am going to change it from a group flow, though, to custom so that I can find it there. And so then we still have the action list as a, um, as a parameter. But I'm going to add an additional parameter. Now, I've done the research on this. And uh, so it's going to be a copy and paste. Uh, you'll, um, but I'm just going to add a custom um, segment of code that is a different parameter. It's the documentation, uh, and it's going to say document your actions here, and it's going to be a rich text. And that's it. This, this, just the fact that we've dropped this file in and made a couple of changes 
will, Im will impact the way that our um, uh, plant and app implementation looks. We do have to do a couple of steps. First of all, we have to refresh the cache so that it picks up the fact that that exists and we'll also refresh the page. And so now when I add a action, we'll see that uh, if, I, if it had worked right, we would have a custom section. So let's see if I, um, I'm gonna try again. And of course it didn't find. Anybody catch what I did wrong? Let's even make sure I saved the file. That's a good one. Yes, I saved the file. Custom execute actions, group custom. And I'm, uh, I'm hitting another failure. So let's, um, <clears throat> let's go with that's all that is required, but there is a little bit of interaction that's necessary to make that happen. So um, I have to, I'll have to redeem myself next week and see if I can figure out what I, what I did wrong. Um, in the meantime, I have prepared a, um, the, int the integration that we're actually going to implement for HubSpot, and I'm going to copy it into our folder. And so just the fact that we are dropping in this, um, this file into our uh, actions folder is going to implement the HubSpot. So I'm going to show it to you, and then uh, we'll go dig into it and see what's inside of it. So again, we're going to clear the cache. refresh. And now we see we have a HubSpot section, create contact in HubSpot. And so first let's see what it looks like and then we'll kind of walk through what the content is. So it uh, we get these standard items, title, description, error message, condition, but then we're collecting the HubSpot, HubSpot credentials in our standard credential manager. Um, we're having, we have a place to add the properties, like we're going to be able to set first name equal to some variable value, and you could add as many as you needed. So there's the ability to do that. Um, if we want to store the result of the token name that's generated, we would pop, populate it here. And um, if, if the implementation gets done uh, fully, we'll, we could handle errors if, if they occur. So we have um, uh, one, two, three, four different um, action parameters that were custom to this particular uh, setting. So let's take a look at what that looks like within, uh, within the file. So if we look at that file, uh, plant an app, um, well, I'm just going to look at it directly in the in an editor. Um, so it it again has a has an ID. It has a uh, description. Uh, create the, what it is created in HubSpot, and then um, this is the code that's going to go behind it. And uh, when Robert will follow along with me and get that done. Um, but then here are the parameters. We ask for the credentials, and that's all done in that set of, of uh, uh, this. And, and obviously, this is JSON content, so it all happens there. And then we also ask for what are the input properties. So we ask for the HubSpot property values, and we can add up as much description as we need to tell what to do in that spot. And then we have property name, property settings, and, and a button that says add property. So each one of these sections of the parameters collects the thing that uh, that's going to be required in the code and provides the hooks that are going to be uh, implemented um, in, in the code behind. So uh, just the fact of dropping this file in and, uh, and, and configuring it 
uh, that that gets our front end done, and now it's it's ready to hand off to a developer uh, to to get implemented. So that's as far as uh, uh, that's as far as we're uh, that I wanted to take it today and and turn it over. Uh, I hope to Ro I think Robert is going to jump in here um, and take it to the next step. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Thank you, Dale. So. Let me share my screen. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Okay. So, um, so to create a, uh, an action, you need first create um, a new project in which I'm going to use uh, Visual Studio. You can use Visual Studio Code as well. So it's not a, an issue. Uh, I will uh, create a class library uh, and I will choose .NET Standard. Uh, also C Sharp, not Visual Basic. Visual Basic, Basic should work as well, but we, we work with uh, uh, C Sharp. So, okay, so let me... Create the, the project. Okay, so uh, it created a project. Uh, this is the new uh, CS Proj uh, file format. Uh, first thing that we need to do is to switch back to the .NET framework. Um, the minimum requirement for, for our um, modules is .NET uh, 461. You can use 47 or 48, that's not a problem, but you can't use uh, .NET Core or uh, the new .NET 5 that released uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so yeah, this is the, the first thing. Robert, I'll, I hate to interrupt. Is there any way that you can make the, the text just a little bigger? Yeah. Uh, is that fine? No? That helps a lot. Thanks so okay. much. Okay, so next thing uh, would be to copy some library uh, files that are uh, needed. Uh, okay. Uh, and then include them uh, into our project. Um, okay. So uh, we will need two of our uh, DLLs and the .NET new DLL. Uh, we are going to uh, use uh, 804 because that's the minimum, again, the minimum version of DNN that we support with our uh, modules and that will change pretty soon. But for the time being, uh, we'll use that. Uh, that added this, but you don't need to worry that much about it. Uh, and then uh, let's create the action. So uh, I think it was called uh, create uh, contact. Um, and what you are going to need to, to do is implement an interface. Uh, it is called EI action implementation but unfortunately it is uh, the short version of implementation. Uh, it resides in the common DLL in, in the actions uh, namespace. Uh, what this uh, has, uh, has an init method and uh, an execute method. Uh, the init method can and usually uh, will be empty. Uh, this is something from our obsolete code, but yeah, it's still in the implementation. Um, next, let's uh, open Dale's config. Okay, so um, we need to take a look at the parameters. 
the first one is credentials. Uh, this ID is, is important uh, in, in the code because uh, that's uh, how the parameter needs to be called. Um, basically, the parameter will be the uh, property in, in this class, so we can create it. Uh, we create it of type action credentials because uh, the properties of type credentials. Uh, and we need to add this, uh, this attribute here, the action parameter uh, attribute. Uh, this attribute has uh, multiple um, properties. Uh, as you can see, you can rename the, um, the um, parameter, the property here. So you can just uh, put here name and uh, this needs to actually be the same as in the config. But again, if you have the same name here, you don't need this, it's, it's optional. So again, if you really need to change this here, you'll have to uh, put it back here. Uh, the next thing would be if you want to apply tokens or not, uh, this usually works with uh, parameters uh, that are of type string. Uh, in this case, uh, it will not work with uh, action credentials because those are, are a complex uh, parameter and uh, they are, are already tokenized uh, because we recognize them. Um, the next thing would be if uh, the parameter is required or not and uh, if you want to put a message for it. We have some default message, but if you want something custom, you can add here. So again, uh, we can put uh, if here like is required true and required message, whatever. Um, so yeah, this is an option. Um, this I will show you immediately. And that's about everything that you need to know uh, here. So for this, I don't need any additional settings. Um, Let's also put the output token as we said. So when you want it to be output token, obviously you will put is output token true. Uh, so uh, what uh, this basically does uh, is to uh, strip any uh, square brackets that you put in, in the value in the um, uh, com configuration of the action if uh, the, ad, well, not the end user, the admin that configures or uses the action. If uh, for some reason uh, he puts uh, square brackets, uh, we will strip those out so that uh, uh, the, the name is valid. Um, so, yeah, and uh, this is mostly it for creating the action. So as I said, you need to define some uh, parameters and you need to implement this uh, execute action. Uh, do not bore you with, with the code and I don't think we will uh, be able to do it in like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, I will copy everything from something that I've prepared already. Um, So yeah, let's delete this class one. And um, see the actual implementation of the of the action. So, uh, oh, right, I forgot something. You also need to add a dependency to, to Newton soft through uh, NuGet. So, uh, for this, I recommend 1003, I think that's what DNN also use, uses. So it's better for compatibility reasons. Uh, let's see, it looks like it's okay. And we also need to add a reference to a system net HTTP. So searching here, system net HTTP. And that is it. Okay, so 
now let me hide that so that we have a little more real estate. So uh, again, uh, this is a credential parameter as before. Uh, now we added the input properties uh, uh, param parameter. Uh, that's how the HubSpot property values that you saw uh, uh, in the action is actually called. Uh, and then the output token name and the on error stuff. Uh, then uh, from the credential uh, parameter, we can retrieve uh, uh, some uh, parameter, some values. Um, let me just quickly show you the, so apart from the, from the action config, you'll also need uh, at least uh, a config for the credential type. Uh, and uh, basically that defines uh, what uh, values uh, does a parameter store, uh, does a, sorry, a credential uh, store. Uh, this is the uh, credential type for the API key uh, of uh, hotspot. It just needs an, an API key. We specify that it's of type password so that in the UI uh, you will not see the value. So in case you uh, you are sharing your screen or something like that, you don't uh, uh, leak uh, secret uh, stuff or sensitive stuff. And then we also specify that uh, it is secure so that when it is stored in the database, it will be encrypted uh, with a combination of uh, some private values in, in DNN. Um, so again, uh, we have this, this uh, thing that uh, it's stored in this uh, credential and we can access it by accessing uh, an entry in the credential and then retrieving uh, its value here. The true parameter also, uh, specifies that if it is not found, it will throw an error so that you don't uh, call the service or anything else with an empty API key or a credential that is not configured. Uh, next, we create an HTTP service. This is something that uh, we provide and simplifies uh, API calls and things like that. Uh, you can use the HTTP client as well, but keep in mind that uh, this action uh, is not async. So you will might have issues because HTTP client only supports uh, async execution. Uh, there are a couple of other uh, uh, things in .NET that can make requests uh, and you can use those to, to make uh, uh, a request in a non-async uh, or in a sync uh, environment. Uh, so we create that uh, service and we are using, uh, using blocks so that it disposes everything that this creates so that we don't have memory leaks and stuff like that. Um, we have here a constant that I put is the base path to the to the HubSpot uh, API. Uh, uh, then we put the the path to the contacts API. This can also be a constant or something like that, but yeah, I didn't bother. <laughs> uh, and then we need this uh, API key to be uh, provided to, to the API. Uh, this is again a, a constant with uh, the key that needs to be passed to the query string of the of the API, and this is the value that you retrieve from the credentials. Uh, then here, uh, an important thing is that we uh, we are getting the input properties that we want to send to HubSpot, and we are applying tokens on the value of them. So if you want to support tokens uh, on the input properties, you will have to, to use this uh, context that apply all tokens. Context is uh, something that is provided in the execute uh, action here, uh, execute method. Uh, here uh, we have everything that is related to the execution of, of the action is the context of the execution of the action. So you can have access to to the data store that uh, stores uh, other tokens that, that are in the context and a few other things. You can inspect it and see exactly what you can uh, do with, with this. Uh, it is also helpful for logging. You have here uh, some logging uh, uh, methods and you can add logs so that you can debug your code in, in a live environment or to log some information if something go, goes wrong. Um, and yeah, uh, 
I'm not sure what else is important. You have the portal, you have uh, the uh, tab information from DNN and the module. Uh, here is a, a list of uh, users that are, are loaded into context using our um, uh, load user uh, action. Uh, and yeah, I think that's everything that I can really uh, say here. And also this is the current user that uh, executes the, the, the action. Okay, uh, so again, uh, going back, uh, we get the, uh, those properties and we serialize them uh, in, in an object that uh, HubSpot ex uh, expects. So as you can see here, this is uh, uh, an object that has a properties uh, uh, property. <laughs> uh, and this tricked me uh, at the beginning because as you can see here, it's a bit confusing because they show you that you need to pass this in, but actually uh, you need to pass an object that has a property, property that has this value. So yeah, it got me uh, there. I had to look here to actually see what needs to be sent. So yeah, careful with uh, this doc their documentation. Uh, yeah, uh, again, I just went to the documentation. This is all the information about the API. You can see uh, what return, what, uh, values uh, it returns you can also see the error values and things like that so it's a good place to start when uh, trying to integrate with uh, with them uh, and then we use the http uh, service to send a request uh, we create a request of type post with the uh, uh, url that was uh, built here uh, we set the content uh, and we specify that it's uh, a JSON request. Uh, this will also uh, make the request. So when you, you call this, uh, the request will be uh, immediately sent. Uh, you can then check uh, if uh, it was successful. If it was not, uh, we handle here the exception uh, case. So we read uh, the error that the server returned. Uh, we check for that on error uh, parameter that was provided. And if that has actions, then uh, it means that uh, it will handle the, the error case and it will not enter this if here. Important, there is a not here. Uh, otherwise it will just throw uh, an exception and we log the status code and the error from the server. Um, in case you have on error uh, actions, uh, it will try to either use the output token name if that was provided, I'll, uh, otherwise it will fall back on a server error uh, base token. Uh, and it will populate some uh, tokens uh, in the context and uh, execute the on error uh, actions. So basically you'll have access to, to these uh, two tokens in this context of the on error execution. So here I'm also passing the status code and the, the same uh, response error. It's, it's a string, uh, as you saw in the documentation for the error, it's actually a JSON. Uh, so usually you will have to get this token and parse it with, uh, with one of our actions and retrieve some values from there if you want to display a, a better uh, error to, the, to your client. Uh, in case the, the response was successful, the, the request was successful, uh, we again uh, read uh, this time the, uh, the response of the, of the successful uh, request. Uh, and if we have uh, something in, in the output token again, we will also uh, put some values in, in the context. Uh, we'll put the entire response. Uh, so here you can see it has a couple of information like the properties that you sent and if you updated it, when you updated it, when you created it, etc. And uh, to be able to quickly uh, uh, reference it, uh, we also I, I also put the ID here in another separate token so that yeah, you can use it. And I put minus on if 
for some reason there is no ID uh, property in the response, which should not happen, but better be safe than sorry. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, also, uh, another thing here, uh, the execute uh, method uh, expects uh, a result. Uh, when you provide a result, it will stop the execution of the uh, action that follow it. Uh, if you return null, it will continue executing uh, the next action. So if you think about the, the action list that you build in uh, workflows and in, in our modules, uh, usually the, the action, I mean, the, the action that uh, actions that are um, not final, uh, they will usually return null uh, in the success uh, state. Otherwise it will throw or it will return uh, a result with an error or something like that. But in the success uh, state of the, of the action or the successful execution, it will return null so that the next action after it, it will continue. Uh, and that's about it. And now I will uh, show you how this works. I'll quickly connect uh, here and let's build this. So yeah, you will have to first copy this DLL uh, that uh, was provided uh, to the bin folder of your uh, instance. So let's see if this, okay. So you, you will copy it directly here. And also if you have uh, additional, let me see. If, Did not copy it. Okay, so if you have uh, additional DLL, so you have some kind of SDK that you are using to connect to some uh, service or something, you'll also have to copy those SDK DLLs here. Uh, you will not need to copy the common, common to, or of course the .NET new DLL. Uh, we don't need to copy the Newtonsoft uh, DLL because the same one is already provided by uh, DNN. So it's already here, so we don't need to, to copy it. Um, the next thing that uh, we need to copy are the configs uh, for the action and for the uh, credentials for the credential type. So first let's copy the uh, credential. Uh, okay. And action, copy the action. Uh, as you can see here, there is also credential type actions. Uh, these uh, actually are some actions to, to manipulate that uh, HubSpot credential. Uh, you can add new credentials programmatically uh, or update uh, or delete, but the delete one is uh, generic. This one needs to be configured for each credential type, but I will not copy them because we will uh, add the credential manually for this uh, demo. Um, okay, so uh, because I copied the, uh, the DLL, DNN will uh, restart the, the site. So we don't need to uh, clear the cache or something like that. But when you uh, copy new files, as you've seen in Dale uh, case, uh, you'll have to clear the cache or in some situations, uh, recycle the, the application. Okay, 
So the site is started. And let's see if we have the action and we have it. Uh, we'll have to create a credential. So we have here a manage uh, credential thing. Uh, uh, in your situation, you will not have the credential type created in the database and you need to click this button and wait for a bit. Uh, you need to create a new uh, group and uh, a new entry and put in the uh, access key that the API key that uh, HubSpot requires. Uh, now created that uh, credential and you it's automatically populated here uh, and everything is fine. So uh, let's create some things here. So for, uh, email, I think it's needed first name and last name. I think we have uh, a couple more, but I will not add them. Uh, you can also add here custom uh, properties that you define in, in your data model in HubSpot, but we'll not go into that. Uh, if you put something that it's, it's not on the HubSpot site, it will throw an error that the pro property is not recognized. Uh, we'll create this uh, uh, token here and let me take the uh, values here. So it's email, first name, last name, last name. Okay. Okay, and we can, so this was actually the, the old uh, workflow that uh, handle the uh, create house for contact. And here are the old uh, server requests. Uh, and I will delete this one. Okay. Uh, we'll need to change a few things in the rest of the actions here. So it will parse this and it will have the contact data. Actually, I don't think I will need it uh, because uh, as I said, uh, I am generating the IDs. So uh, here, I have to change this. Um, so uh, here I will need this and this. Okay. And we should be fine, I think. I think you can delete that action to parse tokens. You don't need it anymore. Oh uh, yeah, I think, uh, as I said, I think uh, I can do that, but yeah, uh, I've up already updated this. So let's try quickly here. Uh, let's hope those are not required. Right, so yeah, the, the issue is, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it failed to add uh, into the list. So, so the issue uh, is that uh, this was previously uh, for another uh, HubSpot account and I don't have the list and it's hard coded. So uh, we'll not be able to use these two actions, unfortunately. Uh, but but uh, probably yeah. should have created the contact in HubSpot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the next thing that I will check. So it created the, the, the contact here and you have the first name, the last name, the email. And as I said, if you added, uh, if I've added the additional parameters, you, you can uh, populate them all. So yeah, that's, that's about it. It's not easy, but it's not that difficult either. So yeah. Uh, I think we will provide this code. Uh, there might be some uh, scenarios that need to be handled as well, some error things and stuff like that. But yeah, it's basically working code. 
Very good. So Dale, does this does the job for you? <laughs> yeah, no, that that does the the create, and I can see where it would create all the different uh, properties if there were customizations. So that's really made the the creation easy, and it certainly was easy for me to just create the uh, the model and then pass it to Robert to do all the hard work. Cool. So now that you have this action, you can actually use it in any uh, modules that support action. So you can use it in uh, forms, in scheduler, in APIs as well. Right. So it's the same thing. You don't have you don't have to know the APIs anymore. Robert did that work for you. So now you can be the user of the action, just filling in the parameters and uh, selecting the credential from the dropdown. Cool. So uh, hope, I hope this was a uh, very helpful uh, training for all of you, because I think this is this this kind of features are less known by uh, by our uh, users so far. The fact that you can extend uh, our modules in so many uh, ways, and today we looked at just one way to extend it by adding new actions, so to create new business logic. But in future editions, we look at other uh, extension points because I think we have over 30 extension points. Some refer to creating new templates, some refer to creating new data sources. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll look at those in more in depth because that's where the uh, most of the power comes for complex requirements. So thank you all for being here. Uh, again, I hope it was helpful. If you have any feedback regarding uh, this uh, event, I, uh, I would love, we would all love to, to hear it because it helps us uh, improve uh, with every edition. So thank you so much for being here and we'll be seeing you next week, same day, same hour. Have a good day and evening. Bye.